Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an awesome exponential expression. I mean you can't solve an expression, I mean simplify an awesome expression. Why is it awesome? Because we have a complex number at the base and at the exponent we have an imaginary number. So it's kind of like complex to the power complex. How complex can you get, right? So how do you raise a complex number to a complex power or any power? I mean, if, if you, you were given one minus i, you could go ahead and raise it to the power three, easy, the binomial theorem, right? But how do you raise this to the power one half? Well, that means the square root. How about one minus i to the power three fourths? Well, it just means the cubit and then take the fourth root or take the fourth root and then cubit, which should give you the same thing. But the fourth root, there is more than one. There's four fourth roots. Which one do you take? The principal value. Which one is the principal value? Those are good questions. If you're new to complex numbers, by the way, go ahead and check out my lecture videos on basics of complex numbers. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry, tiny bit of geometry, check out CyberMath. CyberMath is one of my first channels, my very first channel, and it's Cyber with an S. Don't get it wrong, okay? And let me know what you think. Maybe you, that's where you come from. If you did, say hi. All right, so how do you raise one minus i to the power two i? It's kind of weird, right? Maybe we can do this. We can take one minus i and we can raise it to the second power. And then whatever comes out of it, we can raise it to the power i. Is this gonna work? Some people say it doesn't because here's the problem. a to the power b to the power c equals a to the power bc and that is equal to a to the power c to the b if a, b, c are real numbers, but when they're complex, imaginary, you name it, then Houston, we have a problem. We have to be very careful because it doesn't always apply. But one thing that applies, thanks to Euler, we have something called Euler's formula. I mean, Euler is the best, in my opinion. You can argue all you want, but I think he's amazing because he found the most beautiful equation. We'll probably talk about it towards the end, okay? But it's amazing. I mean, he's amazing. What he did was amazing. Unbelievable. Shocking. Okay, so... How do we approach complex exponentiation? And what does that mean? It just means that if you have a complex number Z and another complex number W, by the way, they don't have to be the same, they don't have to be different, just arbitrary complex numbers, this can be written, thanks to Euler again, because he came up with Euler's number, which is E, E is about 2.7. What was that? What's this next digit? One or two? Something like that, but I don't really need it. 2.7 is good enough. So we can write this as E to the power W, ln z. Some people interpret this as e to the power ln z to the power w because e to the power ln something is something, but what does z to the power w mean when you don't know what it means, right? It's kind of like a circle reasoning. That's why we want to write it this way. But then another question comes up. What is ln z? Okay, ln z is not something like gen z. Gen z is different, very different by the way, okay? I can say this because I'm not gen z. And anyways, ln of a complex number is the complex logarithm. So we have a definition for that. Let me give it to you without further ado, because otherwise this video is gonna take forever. I know you're still gonna watch it, my beautiful viewers, my um, awesome uh, people, people of math, okay? But let me just give it to you real quick. ln of a complex number, the natural log of a complex number, is basically defined as ln of the absolute value of that complex number plus i times the argument of that complex number. An argument is basically when you plot z in the complex plane, it makes an angle, right? And that angle is always um, measured in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise, and it's theta. And the absolute value, this is the argument of a complex number z. This is the z, z is basically represented by the dot. This is real axis, this is imaginary axis, good old x, y axis, we just name it differently. And this is called the Argand plane. Ta-da, big names, right? So, how does this all work? Well, absolute value of z can also be called r. In other words, z can be written as r times e to the i theta. So ln z can be written as ln r plus i theta. But you gotta be careful because theta is not unique. Theta, I mean, not theta, theta. Theta, the Greek letter, which is hard to pronounce for me, is basically you can add multiples of 2 pi to it. So 
if theta is the principal value, you are allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. Or theta just represent general. Uh, when you find the solutions, you can add them. But what about uh, the, okay, what is the ln of z in this case? So we've got to apply it to our situation, right? So this is our number. So this is z and this is w. So let's go ahead and use the formula. e to the power 2i times ln 1 minus i. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and focus on evaluating this first, and then I'll just, boom, plug it in, right? So if I scared you. But ln 1 minus i can be written as ln absolute value of this. This number, absolute value of 1 minus i, as you know, is the square root of 2. You should know this. The square root of a squared plus b squared from the Pythagorean, Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem plus i times, okay, how do you write the angle, right? Okay, let's talk about it. 1 minus i, 1 unit this way and i unit this way. So this is i unit, this is 1 unit, and their kind of intersection, whatever, is this one. So you would like to measure it like this, right? Okay, that's too much. Just measure it in a negative way. It's a lot easier, negative pi over 4. Yes, this is negative pi over 4. So that's my number. So I can write it as ln root 2, minus i pi over 4, right? This is ln 1 minus i. But again, the principal value. Because our principal argument needs to be between negative pi and pi. I think negative pi is not included. One of them is not included. Something like that. I keep forgetting. But let's go ahead and substitute that. So 1 minus i, again, going back to the beginning, to the power 2i equals e to the power 2i multiplied by ln this, ln root 2, minus i times pi over 4. How awesome is that, right? Okay, after doing this, I'm going to show you an alternative approach. Do you think that's going to work? Okay, anyways, let's finish this first. So if you distribute, you're going to get e to the power 2i ln root 2 minus, now one thing I forget to say, and I always forget to say that, i squared is negative 1, okay? So i squared is going to give us a negative 1, giving us a plus sign, and 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. Awesome. Obviously, you can write this differently, e to the power pi over 2 times e to the power i times 2 ln root 2. By the way, ln root 2 can be simplified because that's ln 2 to the power 1 half. You can bring the 1 half to the front, multiply by 2, it's going to cancel out. So I think this is going to equal e to the power pi over 2 times e to the power i times ln 2. Awesome. I think this works. I hope so. Great. Now, what am I going to do? Well, this is where Euler comes in if he didn't come in before. e to the power i theta, this is the most beautiful equation. Are you guys ready? Buckle up. It's cosine theta plus i sine theta. Ta-da! This is the most beautiful equation, or the most beautiful equation comes from here. So, this is your theta. If you plug it in, you get the following. e to the power pi over 2 times e to the power i ln 2, which is cosine of ln 2 plus i sine of ln 2. By the way, this is the principal solution. There are infinitely many solutions. Why? Because it's multivalued. I don't know. Somebody came up with it. But that should be the answer, right? Don't you think? But before we get to the Wolfram Alpha's result, I want to show you something else. Remember what we had? 1 minus i to the power 2i. So I was thinking, remember the stuff we talked about, a to the power b to the power c? Wouldn't that be nice if I could just square this number and then raise it to the power i? Because if you square 1 minus i, you get negative 2i. Check it out. Why, right? This should be really cool, don't you think? Well, it looks pretty good. But what about this? Well, I want to distribute. Again, I'm just making a lot of assumptions here. Like, I'm assuming that this can all be done and valid. So don't just be mad at me. I'm not necessarily saying this is all true. But I'm just trying something different, okay? Now, what is i to the i? If I tell you it's a real number, would you believe that? It is real. And I made a video. If I can find it, I'll include it somewhere here, down below, whatever, somewhere. If I can't, please, someone find it on my channel. I know you guys are better at finding my previous videos. If you haven't looked at my previous videos, go ahead and check it out until you find it, okay? So, what is this? Okay, okay that's very problematic, right? But again, that's something like, z to the power w, so can we not write it e to the power i ln negative 2? Yes, but you have to deal with this. What about i to the i? Well, if you just use the same formula, you should get something like this, okay? Let me just skip the steps because that's going to take forever, but I made a video. Go ahead and check it out. 
Now, if you put those two together, are we going to get the same answer? That's for you to find out. Sorry, don't be mad. Left as an exercise for the reader. Ready? I'm going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. Remember what I found when you see Wolfram Alpha's result. Okay? Ta da da da. Here we go. Decimal approximation. Wow. Something like 3.7 something something plus 3.7 something something else i. And it's actually this one. And what is this value? The value we found. The ln something, right? Ln2, I think. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.